Dear Faithful, The Lord's Prayer is sometimes taken for granted, when it should always be considered an incredible prayer that takes us on a journey to the Father, word by word. Reciting it requires a moment dedicated to meditation, freeing the mind from distractions. With this video, we will explore together the profound meaning of the Our Father, a prayer that unites all Christians in the world, creating a direct link with God as Father. Before continuing, however, we ask you to kindly subscribe to the channel and like the video. So in this free way, you will be able to help us spread the Word of God. Thank you very much. Let's continue. The Our Father is a unique supplication to the Lord given to us by Jesus Himself, a fundamental step in bringing us closer to God through prayer. When we welcome God as our Father, we receive the precious gift of being His divine children. As the Apostle John states in the prologue of his Gospel, Jesus gave us the power to become children of God. From this perspective, every Christian is called to live his own filial relationship with God through the Our Father. Now let us carefully reflect on each word of this prayer, because each one conveys a profound meaning that guides us in understanding its importance. From the first two words, Our Father, we can affirm that they have no value if we pronounce them without behaving like true children every day, and if we live imprisoned in our selfishness. The progression of prayer invites us to carefully examine our way of living and understanding the divine will. We cannot say, Thy kingdom come, if we confuse material success with spiritual fulfillment, nor can we ask for our daily bread without worrying about those who suffer from hunger. The Lord's Prayer is a guide to living according to the teachings of Jesus. It is not just a set of words, but a sincere commitment. We cannot say, forgive our debts without being willing to forgive others, nor can we ask that we not give in to temptation if we continue to live in ambiguity. Let us look at the simple and free character with which we address God as Father. The prayer begins with an affectionate address. Our Father who art in heaven, followed by seven requests. The first three concern the glory of the Father, such as the coming of His kingdom, the sanctification of His name, and the fulfillment of His will. The other four are questions addressed to God, concerning life preserved from sin, human desires, the fight against evil, and hope in the Beatitudes. The Our Father can be experienced as a priestly prayer, uniting everyone as one family in communion with Christ. In the first part, we address God individually with you, while in the second part, we join together collectively with we. This symbolizes the elevation of all the baptized to a unique dignity, being part of a single body in the communion of life with Christ. Let's analyze the statement. Hallowed be your name. Here, the ardent desire is that the name of God, the Holy One of Israel, be recognized in its purity. Holiness becomes the quintessence of God, which emerges as a badge of perfection and integrity. The second request, Thy Kingdom Come, brings us to a central theme in Jesus' preaching. This expression reveals the beginning of the advent of the Kingdom of God with the coming of Jesus and the gift of the Holy Spirit to the Church to announce the Kingdom of Heaven to the faithful. It is an invitation to contemplate divine sovereignty in the history of salvation. The next passage, Thy will be done, only emerges in the Gospel of Matthew. This concept delves into the realization of the Kingdom, underlining God's plan of salvation and love for humanity. Here we are called to recognize the mysterious action of God that brings this project to fruition through human collaboration. The section concludes with, On earth as it is in heaven, reiterating the desire that God's name be hallowed everywhere and always. The second part of the Lord's Prayer opens with the humble request, Give us this day our daily bread. This is not just a call for physical nourishment, but a recognition of our dependence on God and the need for daily support to meet life's challenges. Just as the fathers in the desert received manna, today we ask God for the necessary support for our journey. The next question, 
Forgive us our trespasses highlights the human awareness of sin and guilt. The prayer then extends to the recognition of human limits and the request for mutual forgiveness with as we forgive our debtors. Here, we are not just talking about sin, but about debts, recalling the metaphor present in Jesus' parables. The believer not only seeks forgiveness from God, but also commits himself to forgiving others unconditionally, generously, and mercifully. In this way, the Our Father prayer is transformed into a compelling journey through understanding the requests made to God, reflecting the faith humility, and mutual compassion that should characterize our spiritual journey. The sixth supplication addressed to God in the Our Father prayer is expressed with the words, Lead us not into temptation, or, as reported in the Gospel of Luke, Do not abandon us to temptation. The use of the verb induce could give rise to a misunderstanding suggesting that God himself is tempting us. In the Italian language and in all other languages, the phrase lead us not into temptation, has in fact been replaced with do not abandon us to temptation. This is why, after more than 16 years of study by the General Assembly of the Italian Episcopal Conference, Pope Francis recently gave approval to the definitive translation of do not abandon to temptation. We seek support and support from the Creator, just like in a parental figure, perceiving God not as a punisher who tests faith, but a God who accompanies forgives, supports just like a father. The prayer concludes with supplication, but deliver us from evil. Here the only request is to be freed from evil, from the evil one. The believer understands that evil in the world is not generated by the evil actions of men, but is the fruit of a tempter who pushes human beings towards evil itself. The interpretation of the Our Father therefore develops around three commitments and three requests inviting man to aspire to perfection according to divine will. Through the prayer of the Our Father, the faithful asks God for the necessary condition to satisfy both material and spiritual needs, above all by committing themselves to testifying to the holiness of God with the affirmation, Hallowed be your name. Commitment and loyalty emerge in the desire expressed in the phrase, Thy kingdom come, while love is manifested in what it expresses, thy will be done. Dependence on God is stated with the expression, give us this day our daily bread, while the need for forgiveness is found in the invocation, forgive us our trespasses. Finally, the request for salvation is formulated with, do not abandon us to temptation, but deliver us from evil. Let us entrust ourselves to the mercy of God, asking daily for the illumination of the Holy Spirit upon awakening during the day, before sleeping, and before attending Mass. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, we can pray deeply, improve ourselves, and constantly immerse ourselves in the Divine Presence. If you enjoyed this video, give it a like and leave a little heart in the comments. Also, if you haven't already done so, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you very much from the bottom of my heart. May God bless us. Amen.